When it comes to investing in ETFs or funds, one of the things that comes over and over and over is the assets under management of that particular fund or ETF. The assets under management measure allows you to see how much in assets a particular fund or ETF has. And this could be in the form of cash, securities, equities, bonds, and many other different types of assets that the underlying fund or ETF might be holding and and it is important to know so that way you can make an informed investment decision as to whether or not you should invest or sell that particular fund. In this video, I'm going to walk you step by step through the ETF assets under management calculation on Excel. And I'm also going to share with you a really cool way to get this number automatically updated for a spreadsheet for pretty much any ETF or fund that you want to invest in internationally or local. Okay, so if you go to the official ETF website of the particular fund or ETF that you're analyzing, you will see right away the assets under management. In this case, we're looking at the SPY, uh, which is an ETF that tracks the S&P 500, which are the 500 largest publicly traded companies pretty much in the world. And then you see the assets under management measure right here. In this case, we're looking at $413,000 million in assets under under management for this particular ETF. So the way that you can do this is literally just Google the name of the ETF. So in this case, I just Google SPY assets under management and you will see the value right away. What I want to share with you though, is how these calculations are performed for many different ETFs and funds. So that way you can get a better idea of what this number really means for your investments. Okay. So let's assume that in this case, we create a fake ETF and this is called the WISE ETF, ticker WISE. And this ETF has the following attributes or financial numbers. So in this case, we have $100,000 in cash. We have $10,000 in liabilities, and this could be like management fees or any other liabilities and expenses that we may have to incur in order to run this very fancy fund. And then um, the great genius idea of this fund is to put all of the money of that particular fund into Apple stock. Obviously, this is not the way that you would run an actual ETF, but this is just to keep things simple. We have that the fund actually owns 3000 shares of Apple stock. Now, right here, using Y sheets, we're able to get the current market price. And you can see how it updates right here of Apple stock right now at the time that I'm recording the video. And that provides us with the market value of those particular holdings, which in this case is only one holding It's just Apple stock. If we were to do this across many different stocks, all you need to do is just add more numbers. So let's say we own 1000 shares of Microsoft and let's say Microsoft is 150. So you would just keep adding to the calculation. But in this case, we're going to keep it real simple. So the market value is essentially, as I mentioned, the number of shares that the fund owns of that particular security, whether it's a bond or whether it's a stock times the market price. So in this case, this is the market price right now. And that gives you the market value of the holdings of that particular fund. Now, if we want to calculate the assets under management, what we need to do is very simple. We essentially sum all of the assets that the fund owns or holds, and we subtract any liabilities. So in this case, all we would need to do is add the cash. And let's say this is the cash that the fund was able to raise by going out and getting money from investors. So this is the cash that we have. And then what we're going to do is we're also going to get the market value of the shares that the fund owns. And all we need to do is subtract the liabilities that the fund has. And in this case, the assets under management for this particular fake fund is $617,000 roughly. So as you can see, this is roughly how the calculation is performed. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that sometimes it takes a little bit of time for the calculation to be updated. So you may see this number change only like every day, even though this really changes pretty much every second, every minute, because if that particular ETF or fund is holding stocks or bonds, the value of those uh, tend to uh, go up or down all the time. Now, what I want to share with you is how it is that you can automatically get 
the ETF assets under management or also for other regularly listed public uh, funds. And most importantly, the value of this, how you would actually apply this information to make a good investment decision. So as you can see right here, we have a whole bunch of funds and ETFs and you can see their names right here along with a whole bunch of information. So in this case, we have the price, the last annual dividend, the volume, the expense ratio and the five year uh, price change for that particular ETF. What we're going to do is we are going to add the assets under management. For that, you can just simply type AUM. And in this case, we are going to use the wise funds function. If you want to know how this works, we have tutorials that you can check out on our channel that relate to Y sheets, the plugin that we're using to get the data. And this works on Excel and Google Sheets. So for this, you will see it's very simple. It's going to ask you for the symbol and the parameters. So in this case, the symbol is this this and then the parameters the one that we're looking to get is the AUM which is the same thing as the assets under management we're gonna lock this in and now what we're gonna do is we are going to double click here so that we can get this data across all of the ETFs as you can see there's some ETFs that don't have this data and this is because the list of ETFs that you can find across the world is very extensive however you can find this metric and this number for many many and thousands and thousands of ETFs of course with new coverage going on and being added every single day now as you can see now we have the AUM for all these different funds the real value of AUM is that it allows you to see the scale at which these ETFs and funds are really operating at it is not the same if you have an ETF or a fund that's running you know only managing a hundred million dollars versus a fund that's managing 500 billion dollars the scale is completely different and usually what happens is that the larger funds are able to have a lower expense ratio so this is another metric that you can see it's right here on the spreadsheet and you can also get using the wise formula whereas the funds that are smaller because they're managing less money and they still have quite a bit of expenses they tend to have less assets under management and charge higher fees so generally what you want to do is you want to look for funds and ETFs that have high AUMs, obviously a really good historical track record, and also an ETF that you understand and that you understand the underlying holdings of that particular fund or ETF. And also generally a lower expense ratio, because if you're paying a lot in terms of the expense ratio, that's going to come directly from your returns as an investor. And nobody wants to have great returns if all that return is going to be taken away from you so be sure to pay attention to these metrics as you are able to navigate the world of ETF and fund investing and find the best particular funds and ETFs that best suit your criteria. If you want to know more about this process of picking ETFs and whatnot, uh, we have a video called uh, how to build a screener for ETFs. So be sure to check it out. And it basically walks you through the whole process of adding all of the data that you want across all these different ETFs. So that way you can analyze them all in one single view and pick the ones that best suit your particular criteria. Now you know what the assets under management metric means how it is that you can calculate it and also how to get it automatically on your spreadsheet if you've enjoyed this video make sure to subscribe and turn on the notification zone so that way you get notified every time we release a new video like this that's going to allow you to take your investing game to the next level